You know, a long time ago, we came to a conference just like this in England. We traveled to the ends of the earth, to a tiny place in England that no one has ever heard of called Warsaw. And people think it's in Poland. That's Warsaw. But, um, you know, we, we came and we, made, we took a journey with our daughter that was given just a few days to live. And, you know, we came with hope in our hearts because of a cassette tape. Actually, explain this a little bit. We received a cassette tape just at the right time. Our daughter was given just a few days to live. She had an incurable disease, was sent home um, to die, basically. But instead of taking her, to, uh, taking her home to die, we took her for a second opinion. We heard that there was a great physician that had a different plan for her life. And we received a cassette tape from a man with a funny American accent that we couldn't understand because he sounded like Alvin and the Chipmunks. But, um, <laughs> and so we had to keep slowing it down. You know, Apparently it was sped up a little fast back then. But uh, we kept listening to it, and there was something on that tape that just resonated on the inside of us. And we're like, we don't understand everything he's saying, but, but he keeps quoting the word of God. He keeps, I mean, you could listen to Andrew's message and you could have your Bible in the other hand and everything he was saying, even though there's something in me that so much wanted to argue with him, and I was trying to argue with your cassette tape, but he kept bringing out the word of God. I'm like, well, you can't really, oh, you, God, you can't really argue with God, right? Well, he doesn't get very far. And so something happened on the inside of us. We started to believe, we started to, hear, to, to understand that there was another report that we could believe. That even in the midst of darkness, even in the midst of despair, that God had a plan for Hannah to live and not die. And we started to allow that word to get down onto the inside of us. That was enough to propel, to propel us to come to a meeting just like this. And I'm telling you, we didn't go home disappointed. And I don't believe you're going to go home disappointed either. Amen. Because God is not holding back on us tonight. He wants us to receive. Amen. And so tonight, I'm going to be talking about receiving miracles because I figured that's what most of us are here for. Is that right? Is that what we want to hear? Okay. So, you know, these are some of the questions that were going through our mind while we were believing for our daughter Hannah to be made well. And, you know, we were associate pastors of the, of the church at that time, and uh, we'd seen some really miraculous things in our life, but we had no understanding of them. In fact, when I look back at my life, I've lived a life of many, up until now, uncelebrated miracles. Things that happened, we, we prayed, we, we, saw, we saw God answer a prayer, but we didn't really understand what happened, so we just kind of swept it under the carpet and said, well, that was weird. I don't know what happened there. Here's the problem, if you don't understand how the Word of God works and operates, if you don't understand God's will for your life, if you don't understand that we have a, a, a Savior that's ready, willing, and able to heal every condition that's plaguing our body, in fact, more than that, He's already paid for it, we are not going to be able to make sense of the things that happen in our life. So we might find some success at some point. We might find that we see some answered prayers at some point but we don't have enough understanding of those experiences to replicate them on a consistent basis. Have, I mean, and I speak to lots of people and they're very confused because maybe they're building healed of this one thing over here, but then they've got this other thing they just, they just can't get rid of. And it's frustrating. There needs to be an understanding at a foundational level of how miracles, how the supernatural power of God works so that every time we need it, it's right there. We just tap right in. We can live a life of divine health. Did you know that? Yes. We're not, and here's, here's the, 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 the challenge in this. I want to speak about receiving miracles tonight, but at the same time, I kind of don't. Because I don't want you to have to go from miracle to miracle. You know, if you have to have a miracle, it's because you've had a crisis. I've had a lot of crisis in my life, and they suck. I don't want to have another one, right? So I don't want to have to live always needing a miracle because that's always preceded by a crisis. I've come to realize there's a better way to live. There's a better way to live. We live as New Testament believers in the blessing now of what Jesus has already paid for us to have. Amen. Well, that should change a little bit about how we, re how we receive from God. Because when a crisis happens, it means that we don't have to shake in our boots. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to let the, the wine come out of our voice. 
We don't have to be a victim. We don't have to look at, oh my gosh, I've been suffering with this for, for so many years. Man, I tell you, if I got my medical history out, which I won't because it's in England and it's dead to me now, but back then we used to have paper files. They had to bring out like one of those special carts just for my files. They were that big. But you know, we need to, we need to begin to identify with something different to learn to live in the blessing of what Jesus has provided for us to have so that we don't need to be chasing to receive a miracle every time. We can just tap right in. So I'm going to look at some scripture here, but, but I, want to, I want to get into the Word of God here. The Word of God has changed our life, completely changed our life. Could you put up for me Joshua 1 verse 8? Andrew ended his session this morning with this, and it kind of resonated in me. Joshua 1 verse 8. And here it is. It says, the book, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, and you may, that, you, that you may. So in other words, that's a consequence. You see, there's a consequence of not allowing the word of God to leave out, to to stop um, becoming off of our lips, right? This meditation as a result of speaking the word and meditating in it constantly, day and night, it enables us to do the next part, which is that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Man, all that is written in it. There's some pretty cool things that are written in it. I like that. For then it will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Man, I started um, unpacking this, this scripture a while ago. This word meditate really hit me. You know, the word meditate, when I was growing up, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. And, and so, you know, I, I got into all kinds of stuff as a, as a young person, all kinds of things that I wouldn't recommend, which are demonic and needed several several bouts of deliverance um, to get over those things. But my understanding of meditation was not the understanding of meditation that it's talking about here in Joshua 1.8. I thought we were going to sit cross-legged on the floor. Um, it's not that kind of meditation. Right? Praise Jesus. The word meditate here in this scripture is talking about to speak it, to study it, to utter it, to roar it like a lion or to imagine it. Now, there's a lot in that one verse, that one word, in fact. When we allow the word of God to get on the inside of us, to start coming out of our mouth with authority, to speak, to roar it like a lion means to speak with authority, your own authority, with, with, with a loud voice. Have you ever heard a quiet roar? It's more like a meow, right? You need to have a loud roar. We need to, we need to put some authority behind it to speak it, to study it, to utter it, to roar it like a lion, but to imagine it. Barry was talking about this, allowing ourselves to see the word of God on the inside. These are all steps in receiving miracles. Now you can, play, you can replace that word miracle with healing, with uh, prosperity, with whatever it is that you need, you can insert word here, right? It'll work, it's the same mechanism to receive anything from God. But we need to allow the word of God to paint a picture on the inside of us to where it changes some things about us. It's not just something that we're reading about. It's not just an account that somebody else had. Now it's personal. Now it becomes ours. Miracles and healings, you know, these words that we throw out there, they're they're used interchangeably. But miracles are conceived. Andrew was talking about this this morning. There is a conception in our imagination and then the manifestation happens um, by faith. You know, this is a process. Did you know that miracles have an anatomy much like your physical body has an anatomy? So there is a spiritual anatomy in the process of how a miracle unfolds, much like you have a physical anatomy that they can x-ray, that they can see, that they can test for. What is this, this spiritual anatomy? The Lord showed me there is a process that happens in every kind of miracle. Now, sometimes you can, you, can, you can see it more clearly than others, but it follows a process of confession, creation, and manifestation. If you're writing notes, you should write those down. Confession, creation, and manifestation. You see, the word of God was spoken. God created the very world with his words. In Hebrews, it says the world was framed with the word of God. It was framed. It built a framework. You know, when we imagine something, we are building a framework which God can take and cause to manifest. We are literally giving God something to work with. 
You know, this is so important. There is a creative power that our words release. God spoke it, it was created. We speak it, it is created. You know, this should change some of our chit chat, shouldn't it? Right? When we really understand this, we're going to be a little bit more careful with what comes out of our mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Sometimes we end up with with crops growing in the garden of our heart that we didn't mean to plant, but nevertheless, they're they're, they're growing there. Has anyone ever intentionally planted weeds? No, but they just grow, don't they? You see, this is what happens if we neglect our heart. Weeds just grow. They just grow. No one plants them. No one wants them. They're invasive. They take over. They choke the word. But you know, those things happen oftentimes, by the, they're, they're a produce, a fruit of things that we've spoken or that other people have spoken and that we have allowed to remain. See, we have to weed that garden of our heart. We can't just allow things to grow in it. You know, this is part of meditating on the word of God, of taking the word of God and literally starting to see it. You know, when our daughter was sick, every day the doctors would come in. I was living in the hospital with, with Hannah, We had two boys that were uh, four and five. Hannah was three years old. Ashley was um, a business um, man. He he was self-employed. And so if he didn't work, he didn't get paid. We didn't pay the mortgage. No one got to eat, right? So, you know, we were trying to juggle a lot of things. There was a lot of pressure. And so there there was a lot going on. Every day, the doctors would come in and they'd give us this terrible report. They They never had anything good to say. We called them the doctors of doom in the end. They'd come in like an entourage, you know, they'd have their head honcho, like watching something from the, you know, the end of the level of Super Mario where you get the big boss and then they just get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And so each time the bosses would come in and they'd be bigger and bigger and bigger in their white coats and stethoscopes and their clipboards, and, right? Never had anything good to say. The prophets of doom were arriving. But in the middle of that, we got a hold of that cassette tape and it started us on a journey. We started to listen to the word of God in a way that we hadn't listened to it before. I'm going to encourage you to put on some fresh ears tonight. Put some fresh ears on. You might think, I've I've already heard all that. I've already heard all those scriptures. I already know everything. Well, you know what? You probably don't or you wouldn't be here. Come on. If we already knew everything, well, we shouldn't be having symptoms in our body, should we? Right? I don't know about you, but if no one else needs to hear them again, I need to hear them again. It's good for us to hear. Faith comes by hearing. And so we started to hear the word of God in a fresh way on the inside of us. It started to get down in us. It started to change us. And in that moment, the word of God started to give me visions. That's what happens. I started to imagine things differently. And God gave me three visions particularly pertaining to our daughter Hannah. In the three visions were, at the time, she was three years old. She was uh, laying in a hospital bed. She'd lost all ability to control any, really any part of her body. She was pretty much in a vegetative state. She looked like a skeleton. She's three years old, but she's the same size as a nine-month-old baby. All her hair had fallen out. She looks like a Holocaust survivor. I mean, it looked really bad. Little kids would poke her to see if she was still breathing. And, uh, you know, but in the middle of that, God gave me three, three visions, open visions while I was awake. One of those was her riding a little red tricycle round and round in the driveway. And at the time in the vision, it looked like she wasn't much older than she was right then, maybe three and a half. The second vision was Hannah wearing a green school uniform, specifically green, being about five years old and Ashley walking her through the school gates on the first day of school. Now, in England, everyone wears school uniform, okay? Just clearing that out for you. And then the, the third picture was Hannah walking down the aisle on her wedding day, um, linking arms with her dad. He was walking her down the aisle on her wedding day. Well, you know, in the time when I opened my eyes, I could not see that in front of me. What was in front of me was my dying three-year-old in the bed with a bed that was way bigger than she was. I don't know what it is, but when you put your children in a hospital bed, suddenly they look a lot smaller than they actually are. Right? It just does something to your heart as a parent. But yet everything in the natural was screaming at me, this is a lie, this is a lie, this can't be true. It was trying to argue with the word of God, but it was too late. You see, once the word of God has gone on the inside of your heart, once it's started to plant, once it's started to put roots down, once you've started to meditate on it, it's only a matter of time before it comes out of your mouth. That is what the devil is terrified of. He doesn't care what you believe so much as what you speak. Terrified of it, right? So we start, but it started to change us. 
And now, you know, the end of the story is we went to a conference like this. She was prayed for. She was instantly healed. And we actually ended up going back to the hospital. They couldn't understand what's happened. The doctor actually had to concede and say, I don't know what's happened. It must be a miracle. I'm like, well, you can put that in her notes. <laughs> I want that in writing, that one. Yes, write that one down. M-I-R. There you go. There you go. Right? We have, we have documented evidence. She is a living miracle. Well, you know what? This is 18 years later, and we've seen every one of those visions come to pass exactly how the Lord showed me. Exactly. God is faithful. God is faithful. But they have an anatomy in the spirit realm. There's confession, creation, and manifestation. You know, when Hannah was a baby, she was um, in the womb. She was uh, given a, an, another bad report, right? Before she was even born and she was even sick, she was given a bad report. But there was something about that. She was, oh, I had a scan when I was 30 weeks pregnant, and, they, and I had a terrible seizures and stuff when I was, was pregnant with her. And, and they, they did this. I had all kinds of drugs and things that I was taking that affected the growth of the child. And they did this scan at 30 weeks. And I've got a big old belly out here, you know. And um, they, they took us into a little side room, and they got real serious. And they said that, you know, we found deformities in your baby. She's got a large part of her brain missing. She has club feet. Her fingers are growing sideways across her hands. What do you want to do about your pregnancy? Oh, they said that to the wrong person. I said, I'm going to have my baby. Thank you very much. I'm going to have my baby. And you know what? We never went away from there and, and meditated and studied the deformities on that ultrasound picture. Because it was a lie. Because it wasn't the truth. Because it didn't belong to us. You know, we didn't, ha we didn't have very much going on in the way of discipleship in our lives at that point. But we just knew that whatever was wrong with Hannah, worrying about it wasn't going to fix it. Talking about it wasn't going to change it. Confessing it wasn't going to help. Telling our family about it wasn't going to solve the problem. But if God, God created Hannah, God creates babies... God spoke her into being. He was his plan, his idea. His design. He was designing that child in my womb. And if he was the designer of that baby, then he was big enough to fix her if she was broken. Amen. Simple faith. We prayed a simple prayer in our car and we never spoke about it again. Now, even between the two of us, we never spoke about it again. It was a long, quiet drive home from that London hospital. A couple of hours in the car. Felt very long. But you know what? We didn't go home. We didn't, we didn't phone our family. We didn't tell them. We didn't even talk about it anymore. We prayed, and in our minds, it was finished. Let me tell you, the moment that she was born, none of those deformities were present. Not one of them. Not one of them. If we want to receive what the Word of God promises us, we have to start to change the way we approach the Word of God. This isn't just a story in a book. This is life and death to us. This is our path to prosperity, our path to success, as what, what uh, Joshua is saying there. Right? This, this is important for us to get down on the inside of us. You know, but there are some things, we've seen some amazing things in our life, but there were some things that we had in our foundation that were a little bit broken that hindered this process of confession, creation, and manifestation. And I think a lot of people are like this. They get the idea that they've got to confess something. But you know what? The creation phase isn't always visible. This isn't always something that you can see. You know, when a woman is pregnant, unless you have, you know, instruments and scanners and everything else, you can't see what's growing on the inside of her. When she first conceived, no one else knows there's a baby in there. For, for, for quite a few months, usually. Quite a while. You have to take it by faith. There's, there's something growing on the inside. Now, eventually, it gets to the point where other people can start to see evidence. Oh, some, you know what? Either she's eating a lot of pies, or she's, you know, she's got a bun in the oven, right? They start to see it. They start to see evidence of that creation. But you know what a woman does? She doesn't just wait until she gives birth to get excited about it. No, she's expectant. That's why we call them expectant mothers. They're expecting a manifestation of that creation. You see, when we speak something, we release that creative power and it goes to do something. It, that, the same power that's in our words is the same power that God spoke himself. 
He's put his words in our mouth to build, to plant, to tear down. Same word, same power. Life and death are in the power of our tongue. It's time we began to use it. You know, but there's a, there's a problem here. Sometimes we get, we get caught up in this, this little rut here and we get the idea, well, I know I need to speak something, but I'm not really getting results. I want to show you something here. This is in 2 Corinthians 4.13. It says, we have the same spirit of faith as it is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. Oh, it's not just abracadabra then. We're not just speaking empty words because it sounds like a good idea. We're not saying something to convince ourselves of it. We're saying, we need to be saying something because we really believe it. You know, I meet a lot of people that say a lot of good things and haven't seen any results because there's no belief system behind them. These can't be empty words. It's having the same spirit of faith. Well, you know what? The same spirit of faith is who? It's Jesus. Jesus. This is, this is talking, we've got Jesus on the inside of us. That's more than enough power to raise the dead. I mean, that should get the job done, shouldn't it? You know, if we've got dead raising power on the inside of us, I don't think anyone in here does actually dead yet. No, you all look like you've got a pulse. That's good. Okay? You know, it's, it's not that far gone yet. If you've got dead raising power in you, surely you have cancer killing power in you too. Right? <laughs> we, 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 need to, we need to change the way we view some things. You know, sometimes we, we plant a seed. We're in the seed business today. Lots of seed things going on. Sometimes we plant a seed... And then we want to dig it up to see if it's growing. <laughs> Anyone ever done that? What happens to the seed? It dies. You know, Hannah had a seed journey. Actually, we wrote that little book about it, but it's a fun story and I haven't told it. And I like to hear that story, so I'm going to tell it again. But, um, you know, Hannah had a little seed. After Hannah was healed, we, we took it to nursery. She started acting like a normal child, right? She's actually, she can walk now and talk now. And, you know, she has energy now and she can eat now. And she looks like she's alive. We're going to go and get her to enjoy a normal life. So we put her in nursery school and she went to play and she, she did all the things that normal three-year-olds do. And then one day I picked her up from, from nursery school and I'm standing at the school gates waiting for my older two boys to come out. And she's sitting in this stroller and she has this little pot of mud. And if you've got preschoolers, you'll relate to this. It's one of those clear plastic cups and they pack soil in it, right? And usually a wet paper towel or something. Right? And then they shove a bean seed down the side so you can see it growing roots and things. Right? Is it, is there any teachers in here? Yeah, you've done that. Right? So she comes and she's, and really all it is is a pot of mud with a wet paper towel and a bean seed in it. But my friend is there who's not saved and she says, what have you got there, Hannah? And Hannah says, oh, I've got a bean seed. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a plant. We're going to have beans for dinner tomorrow. I'm like, I've been witnessing to this lady for a long time. And so and she thinks we're crazy anyway because she's seen Hannah dying and now she's healed and she can't figure it out, right? So she says, um, well, Hannah, you know what? That looks like a, a, a pot with mud and a bean seed in it. But um, if, you have, if that grows and you have beans for dinner tomorrow, I'm going to have to believe in your Jesus. I'm like, oh, it's a throwdown. Oh, okay. I see where this is going. I'm just going to do what a great woman of faith does next and say nothing. <laughs> I have learned that if you can't believe, if you can't say anything positive, better say nothing at all. Just say nothing. I'm like, oh, Hannah, this is all on you. <laughs> Honey, this is all your faith. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm invested here. Like, I, I've got a lot of stake, right? So I'm, I'm like, I'm just going to leave it to her. Well, the next day, you know, we, we go home. We put the, the, the seed pot on the side, and in typical three-year-old fashion, they want to water that thing every five minutes. <laughs> that thing was drowned, baptized. I'm like, it's a miracle. And if you know me, I kill plastic plants. <laughs> it's not my gift. Really not my gift, okay? Literally, I killed a succulent once. I'm not sure what that means. Probably the desert is more nurturing than I am. I don't know, okay? <laughs> But, uh, but, but here she's drowned until, until the point where the bean seed is now floating on the surface. <laughs> if it could, you know, grow fins, it would have, you know, be swimming in there. Um, but, you know, we, we, she kept watering it and, and we went to bed. We went to bed. Well, we got up in the morning and that bean seed had not only sprouted, it was 12 inches out of the pot. I, I mean, it's a miracle, right? It's a miracle. She spoke it out. She saw it. 
She saw that bean growing. And you know, I believe that God was pretty invested in this miracle too, because he wanted to see my friend Maxine saved just as much as we did. And so that we came down in the morning, we were so excited. We put a little pencil stake in there and strapped it up to it because it was flopping over by then. It just seemed like it needed a little help, a little handicap plant, just, you know. And so, um, and then we went out all day. We went to school, we did our stuff. And, you know, I go to pick Hannah up from nursery and then I go to the school. And sure enough, Maxine's standing there at the next to me at the school gates. And Hannah's telling her Maxine all about it all about how this bean seed had grown and we were having beans for dinner. Now, I never told you there was not a bean on that sprout. Apparently, in nature, in gardening kingdom, whatever it is, gardening um, those things have to grow quite tall before they grow any and flower or do something. I don't know what they do. Germinate, pollinate something. And then they grow, they grow, they grow beans, apparently. I just go to the supermarket and buy them. <laughs> I, know that, I know milk doesn't come from the supermarket, though milk comes from cows. I know that. <laughs> right? So, um, so there, was, there wasn't any beans on the thing. So there's Hannah spouting off to, to my friend, who I'm very invested in her salvation, and she's suddenly inviting her over to her house. I'm like, oh, I'm very aware of the state I've left my kitchen in before I leave that morning. I'm like, oh God, please say no. Please say no. Everything in me is dying silently. You know, please, please don't come back. My house is a wreck, right? But she's, before we know it, here we are. We have all the kids and this whole gaggle of children and mums are now walking to my house. Doom started to fill me. I felt the blood drain from my feet. But, you know, as we go in the front door and we go into the kitchen, the kids are very excited and full of anticipation. And I'm just, you know, I'm probably not there yet, but at the still time, I'm just saying nothing. We go in... This bean plant had grown again. It was now up to the ceiling. We had one of those um, suspended ceilings. It was growing, attached itself, was growing across the ceiling like some sort of triffid I'd never seen. And it had beans hanging from it. <laughs> we had beans for dinner that night. <laughs> And you know, Maxine was so shocked when she saw those beans, she fell over, landed in the chair in the kitchen and says, I have to believe in Jesus. <laughs> she got born again over a bean plant. Don't can't tell me God can't do miracles, right? Receiving miracles doesn't have to be complicated. It just needs to begin with the seed of the word of God and enough childlike faith to make that thing germinate. Quit overcomplicating your receiving. If you are born again today, you've already received the hardest part. When you received salvation, you received the power of God, the dead raising power of God on the inside of you. That's more than enough. It's a surplus. You can never use that power up. More than enough. There's not a lack of power on the inside of us to receive today. We just got to understand a few, a few key things that's really going to help us. I don't want to go through three, three quick points here, and then I'm going to get praying for you, because that timer is on like a different world clock somewhere. It's sped up or something. I don't know how it happens. This is a different time zone, I'm sure. But three things, okay, in our foundation that can, if those foundations are cracked, it's going to harm us. It's going to interrupt that process of confession creation, and man, and man, confession, creation, and manifestation. You know, it'll cause us to have a spiritual abortion of a baby that's in a creation phase. Because what we'll do is we'll look and we'll see, oh, it doesn't look like anything has changed. It doesn't look like anything has happened. It's just, I don't understand if it's even possible. I'm just not sure about that. I know I, I heard the word. I know I heard the testimonies. I know it sounded good when I was there in the conference, but now I'm at home, I'm just not sure. What we'll do is we'll create a spiritual miscarriage right there. Think about that. How many words have we heard that through different circumstances we have aborted not knowing they were in a creation phase? There is always a germination. There's nothing wrong with the seed. It's incorruptible is what we heard this morning. Yeah. It's incorruptible. So three things we're going to go through here. Are you getting something good? Yeah? Is it, is it making sense to you? Okay. Is Jesus, and, and these are questions that we had to deal with. I told you my life was full of uncelebrated miracles because we didn't understand these three, three things. That Jesus is ready, willing, 
and able. You know, sometimes we need volunteers. If you've ever had an event or put on a party, you know, maybe you've recruited volunteers. Sometimes you get desperate, you'll take anyone with a pulse, right? But not all help is good help, right? Sometimes, sometimes you just, you know, uh, here in, in the mountains, we often have vo volunteer firefighters. And these are people that have other things to do. You know, they have jobs and you know, they get the call and then they have to you know, put everything down and go fight the fire. They don't necessarily have all the equipment or all of the training that full-time firefighters would, ha would have. They don't have all of the experience, all of the resources, all of the training, right? But they're just volunteers. They're doing the best they can with the, with the skills and the training that they have. And we're very grateful for those. But you know what? You don't want a volunteer taking care of your health. You don't, I mean, does anyone want a volunteer brain surgeon? <laughs> I want to know they're qualified, right? I want to know they've got some ability, not just that they're ready and they're willing, but I want to know they can actually do the job, right? Seriously, I mean, we, we travel, we go to churches a lot. And in churches, they have their announcements before we minister. And oftentimes there's, you know, we need help in the kids' ministry. We need somebody that can play an instrument. On, you're on the worship team, where you go. <laughs> and not all of them are good. I mean, some, I'm just saying, not all of them have the ability there, right? So they might have a good heart, but can they play the guitar? I don't know, you know? Um, but I don't want a volunteer brain surgeon. You know, we fly on planes. And sometimes, you know, people have medical episodes and they ask for volunteers. They don't just ask for any volunteers if somebody has a medical episode. They want people that are qualified, yeah. right? I mean, can you imagine if the pilot comes out and says, I don't know, I just think I want to take a break. Anyone want to volunteer? <laughs> You've got a good heart. You can do it. Go on. No, we want to know that, we want to know that our pilot, that our brain surgeon is able. Yeah. You know, Jesus is more than able. He's more than able. Sometimes we don't recognize this because we're so busy trying to fix it or live with it or back a Band-Aid on it, manage our diseases. Though there is another option. We were not created to live just, just getting by, just following the world's pattern of things. There's another. We have a savior, a healer that's more than able. More than able. But we need to reach out. We need to respond to his invitation whether he's stretching out for us in the realm of healing. More than able. You know, let's look at this. This, is a, this, this issue is a big one. Matthew 9. Go on over here to Matthew 9. Matthew 9, and let's look in verse 28. Matthew 9 and verse 28. You know, this is, a, this is something that Jesus asked these people, he says, he entered the house, the blind came, men came to him, and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am what? Able. able. Do you believe I'm a God, I'm a Messiah that's able to do this? You have a condition that is incurable. Maybe it's from birth. I don't know about these guys, right? But he says, they said, to, he asked this question, do you believe that I'm able? Amen. Do you believe he's able today? You know, this is a big deal. Do you believe that God is bigger than? This is really what we're saying. Is God bigger in your imagination, in your confession, in your day-to-day, -day, in your estimation, in your vast experience of the disease that you're dealing with? And we, we do become experts in those diseases, don't we? Is he bigger than that? Because the, when you've been chronically sick, something happens on the inside of you. That sickness, little bit by little bit by little bit, starts to chip away at your, your uh, perspective of how big Jesus is in that situation. We start to take the tablets. We start to do the surgeries. We start to make the physical adaptations in our life. We stop for remembering that God is able. And, God, and Jesus is saying, the, 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 the question of Jesus' ability wasn't really the issue. It was more to, do you believe I'm able? Jesus was more than able, but the question remained, do you believe that I am? Because he could have all of the ability in the world and it wouldn't benefit them. All of the power in the, in the world on the inside and power to raise the dead, the son of God in the flesh, he was not lacking in any department. That's right. But they could have gone away still being blind if they didn't answer that question. Do you believe that I'm able? Not am I, but do you believe it? They said to him, yes, Lord. And then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. You see, people, people often miss this part. 
according to whose faith? My faith. According to how I believe it's going to happen. You see, we receive from God based on how we see it happening. How do you see it happening tonight? How do you see that ability of Jesus manifesting on the inside of you tonight? How do you see that healing power on the inside of you tonight? How do you visualize it? How, do you, how are you going to walk out of here? I mean, you get to decide. Because when we pray for you in a moment, you know what? You're going to receive, not according to my faith, you're going to receive according to how you see it. How do you, how do you imagine it? How do you envisage this happening? How have you meditated on this? Do you believe that you're just going to get a little bit better every day? Right? Maybe you're going to wake up in the morning and all those symptoms are going to be gone. I think Jesus can do that, right? Right? We can do that. Amen. That would be good. Or how about we really did a little bit more? How about we, uh, we imagine that when we walk down the front, as we walk down the front and someone lays hands on us, we're going to receive. Would that be okay? Yeah, you can receive that way. Or how about when we just speak the word, you get it right there in your seat. Would that be okay? Well, you get to choose. You tell me what you want, right? The Lord is going to walk with it whatever way, whatever faith you extend towards him. He's not the one that's determining how you're going to receive. Now, we've, we've heard a lot of word already. We're only halfway through the week. You know, Jairus believed that if Jesus went to his house, he's going to lay hands on his daughter, and that was where his expectation was. That was how his daughter was going to receive. You know, and, and the woman with the issue of blood, she said, well, I'm going to touch his garment. That's how I'm going to receive. Jesus didn't make up the rules. He didn't plant the suggestion. That was their idea. Jairus could have said, well, hang on a minute. My buddy that's enduring had a pretty cool experience. Why don't you just say the word? You don't have to come to my house. And he could have, his daughter could have received that way. But that wasn't what he gave God to work with. You see, they had, they had a predetermined method in their mind about how they saw this playing out. And that is how they received. How, how are we esteeming the ability of God in here? Do we believe he's able to do this? You know, once we get past that point, most people believe actually that God, when they get born again, they believe, well, sure, God created the world. You know, he created people. He's got the blueprint. If they're fixed, if, they, if they're broken, then he probably knows how to fix them. That would make sense. He created them after all. He should know how to fix them. I can believe that God's able to do that. That doesn't hold too many people up. But you know what? The next one, that really holds people up. Do you believe that God is willing? Yes. Do you believe that God is willing? Yes. Amen, he's willing. But here's the thing. The will of God is under, under a debate in many areas of our life. The will of God. People are often asking us, how do we find the will of God? Well, I think Philippians is pretty clear. You know, that this is my determined purpose, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. His will for your life is that you might know him and see his power in your life. I'm signing up for that program. But his will is something people think, oh, well, God is able. He's, you know, he's sovereign. Have you heard that? I grew up in a denominational church. We believed that God was, was able. We believed that God was all powerful. We believed that God was sovereign. We read the NIV and uh, found that there was a few verses missing. Get a whole Bible. No, hear me, really, get a whole Bible, okay? Because that, that translation particularly, it misrepresents the sovereignty of God. I believe that God is sovereign in the sense that he is all-powerful. He is, he is the rulership. He has the authority. He has the power. But that does not mean what has been interpreted to mean in many of our churches, that God is all-controlling. God is not controlling what happens here tonight. He's not controlling. He's not sitting up in the heavens thinking, well, you know what? These people over here are pretty quiet. Not sure if they're really praise the Lord just right tonight. I'm not sure if the power can flow there. I think I'm going to go over, I'm going to go over here. No, you know what? He's not sitting up in heaven deciding on how or when or if we receive. He's done his part. He's done his part already. God is willing. I'm going to show you this, this scripture here. I love this passage. I love reading this. This is in uh, Mark chapter... One, go on over here to Mark chapter one. And we we're going to go to verse uh, um, 40. A leper came to him, pleading with him and kneeling before him, saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. You know, I'm going to show you here, we never have to worry about the will of God when it comes to healing ever, ever again. 
because it's right here in the Word of God. And you know what? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It was good for him, it's good for us. He says, if you are willing, now this is really interesting. This means that at some point, this leper had an expectation because he knew, he didn't ask Jesus if he was able, he asked Jesus if you are willing. That leads me to believe he must have had some experience or heard some testimony, some, or maybe he's seen something himself of somebody else being healed by Jesus. Word had gone around quicker than the church grapevine. is like the speed of light, isn't it, right? Gossip, here you go. So he didn't come wondering whether Jesus was able. That was a question that was already settled in his mind. He wondered if God was willing. If you are willing, you can make me clean. It says, then Jesus moved with compassion, extended his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be clean. Be cleansed. I am willing. You know this word willing? It's thelo in the Greek, and I probably butchered the pronunciation of that, but just go with it because you probably don't know either. Um, <laughs> but it, mean, it means a multitude of different things, actually. You know, it, it means to intend to, to prefer to, to love to, to desire to, to will to. It means to have in one's mind. You see, Jesus, when he met this leper, that wasn't the first time that he'd considered healing this man. He already intended to. He already planned to. He already saw it in his mind. (laughs) He's already seen your healing before you came here tonight. He already planned it this way. It's his desire to, his pleasure to. He wants you to be well. He's already seen it. Have you seen it is more the question. This brings us back to our last last point, and then we're going to pray. So Jesus is is, uh, able He's willing, but is he ready? I was in Walmart one time, and this lady was checking us out, right? And uh, not like, hey, but like checking us out, you know? And um, I just realized that sounded kind of funny. I should probably explain it. And um, (laughs) today, you never know, do you? (laughs) Anyway, so... (laughs) Uh, she was really slow, she was really super uncomfortable, and she was clearly in a lot of pain, and she had like, pain all through, she was like, really stiff. And I had my kids with us, they were little, and um, Hannah's getting really impatient, she, you know, she's about six or seven, and she's like, she wants to go home and do something, and she's just really frustrated with this woman at the checkout, being so super slow, and the line is building up behind us. And um, it was obvious this woman was in pain, and so in the end, Hannah says, my mum will pray for you and you'll be healed. <laughs> Again, my introvert little self wanted to find the nearest rock. But here it was, praying for rapture didn't resolve the problem. So, so, um, I mean, she looks at me and she's like, she's got this stare on her. She's like, oh, but I'm Catholic. I'm like, well, that's okay. Jesus heals Catholics, right? It's no problem. She goes, oh, um, yes, it'd be lovely for you to pray for me. And then she carried on beeping the groceries. I'm like, she did not expect me to pray for her right then. We had a little miscommunication. She wasn't quite ready, apparently. But here it was, incoming. We just slapped our hands on her shoulder and began praying with her right in the middle of the checkout line. You know, and, and you know what? Jesus does his thing, right? And so this woman gets healed, the pain goes. She's like, what pain? I wasn't expecting that. Well, right. She thought I was going to take her name away and add it to my prayer list and, you know, my daily devotions. Just, you know, add a, put a little name on there. I'm like, no, I'm going to pray for you right now. Ready? Here it comes. <laughs> See, Jesus is always ready. He doesn't want you to suffer with this, this sickness, this disease for a second longer. You don't have to make it complicated. He's able, he's willing, and he's ready. He's ready. You know, the funny thing happens when she gets healed in the middle of Walmart then, and all of a sudden everyone's like, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Now we have a prayer line going on, right? Right there in the middle of Walmart. Sometimes we catch people on the way. It's right there. There's ministry in Walmart. Who knew? But Jesus is always ready. You know, and and conditions don't have to be perfect. Can I just free someone of this burden here? Conditions don't have to be perfect for you to receive. You know, maybe you're thinking, I'm the only person that believes in my household. Well, unbelief, your environment you're in, yeah, it it can affect you. Sure it can. But it's not more powerful than your faith. You know, one seed of faith is enough to, a mustard seed of faith is enough to move a mountain. Don't worry about the unbelief. Quit focusing on it all. You know, you might be the only believer in your household. That's enough. One believer with a word from God is never at the mercy of the enemy with a plan. Never. Never. You've got more in you than there's around you. 
You know, when I'm, I'm thinking of the story in, in Luke chapter 5, when Jesus tears the, um, Jesus is in his house and the disciples, t- not, not even disciples, they were just four crazy friends, right? They weren't even that elevated. But they come with a paralytic man and then they, they, they tear the roof off to lower him down, to get in there to Jesus. Then these were some persistent people. They were ready, apparently. They were very ready. Whether Fred on the bed was ready or not, we don't know, but he was there anyway. He was going along with, for the show, right? And so they lower him down there in the middle of that pack. And it says there in Luke 5, I think it's a, maybe it's around 17, something like that. But anyway, it says that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Pa- thank you. Oh, look. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look, I was right. That's awesome. <laughs> Bring all things back to my remembrance. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Now, in honest translations, that word present is in italics. That means that it's added for your um, extra understanding. But it wasn't in the original text. It just says the power of the Lord was to heal them. It was to heal, period. That, that, that's imp- why is that important? Because sometimes we can read that and we can think, well, you know, maybe Jesus was ready then. The, you know, that, that the conditions were perfect. You know, the, the, it was just right. The worship team had just played a perfect song and the fog machine was good and the, 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 the smoke machine was just the right density and, you know, the lights were just good and there was a, mm, the angels were singing. Conditions were perfect then, but what about now? You know, do I have to have the right conditions? Conditions do not have to be perfect for you to receive. Amen. Faith works in the imperfect every single day. We are imperfect people and God works in us in spite of us. He'll meet you in your faith. He'll meet you in your unbelief. Amen. Jesus isn't scared of an unbelieving environment. He went in the middle of the unbelieving environment and healed people anyway. Right? Don't don't listen to the enemy saying, oh, the powers of darkness around you are too great for you to receive. Oh, codswallop. Right? It's very English, isn't it? Codswallop. It's a bunch of malarkey. You know, quit putting too much emphasis on what the enemy is doing and start telling me, what is God doing in your life? What is God doing? Because he's ready. He's not sleeping. He's ready. Amen? He's not holding back on, on us. He's not sitting to something how we're going to believe or if we're going to. He just wants you well. He's already said, I'm willing. I've seen it. I've intended it. I've planned it this way. I have planned for you to receive your miracle tonight. Amen? The question is, are you ready? Oh, come on. Some of you are sleeping. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? In the balcony, are you ready? Are you ready? On the tears over here, are you ready? Come on, let's stand up. Let's stand up. Let's stand up right where we are. Because Jesus is more than ready. He's so ready, he's overdone, right? Come on now. Now, I'm looking for some people, the dangerous kind of people. These are the people that when they wake up in the morning, the devil's like, oh no, they're awake. (laughs) Right? He's intimidated by your very presence. Because when he sees you, he sees Jesus in you. He sees Jesus in you. He sees the full power, the full potential of God that you can unleash on him at any moment if he's at the the moment unsuspecting. You are more dangerous right now than you have ever been. You are dangerous faith on the inside of you. You have the dead raising kind of faith on the inside of you. Do I have any believers in here that would say, I'm a believing believer? I'm a believing believer. Come on now. Right now, now here's the thing. I'm kind of an old-fashioned kind of girl. I believe the Word of God, right? And I I believe it literally. And I believe when it says believers lay hands on the sick and they recover. You just told me that you're believers. That means when you lay hands on the sick, they recover. Now, I know some of you are getting scared. Don't go to the bathroom now. You're going to miss the best bit, right? You're trying to sneak out. The Holy Spirit's going to get him in there. Get him in the bathroom stall. Go on, right? He's going to get you anyway. Get you anyway. So what we're going to do, I'm, don't worry. doesn't have to be frightening. I'm going to pray from here, right? I'm going to use all the words. But all I need you to do as believing believers is be the hands. Can you be the hands? Show me your jazz hands. Come on. Woo. Double rainbow. There it is. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. So um, th- here's what we're going to do. I want you to put your hand up if you need to receive healing in your body right now, just so I can see where you are. Oh, yeah. It's a healing conference. That's pretty much what I would expect. Okay. 
So, uh, so people with their hands up, if you're standing next to them, could you just rub your hands together for me? Just Some of you know what we're doing this for. Do you have some water there for me? Thank you. There's really nothing spiritual about this. I just like watching you do it. <laughs> Thank you. And also, no one likes those icy cold hands laid on them anyway. Okay, now take your nice warm hands and slap them gently. Not slap, place them gently on the person next to you that needs to receive healing. Gently, gently, we don't want a lawsuit. Don't smack them to the ground, okay? I've only done that one time and it turned out good. I don't need to repeat it though. So, okay, so everyone that needs to receive should have somebody laying hands on them. Is that right? I don't want anyone out in the cold, anyone there on their own. Everyone good? Wave at me if you're on your own and you need someone to lay hands on you. I think we're good. Okay, you might, you know what? If you're in a line of people and you all need to receive healing, you just make a chain. That works that way. You know, we've seen, we're, the power of God flows through you when you pray for somebody else. And as Andrew says, when the power of God flows through you, there's plenty left for you, right? We've seen blind people lay hands on blind people and they both get healed. I don't know how that happens. I don't need to know, right? I just need to believe. You don't need to understand, you just need to believe. <laughs> there we go, it's called simple faith. So let's do this. If you've got a prayer language, just begin using it. Say that out loud so we can all hear it. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that your power is right here. Lord, I thank you that it's wafting through the balcony. That it's right there. Every people on the very back row to the people on the very front row. Lord, I thank you the people in the back of the room, the side of the room, the people that are hiding out in the bathroom, in the lobby right now. Lord, I thank you that your power is working on the inside of them, that your power is being released in them, that that healing power is coming out of their spirit and right now through into every single cell in their body, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. We take authority over every lying sickness, over every lying disease, and we command you to go, get out right now. Now, in Jesus' name, every lying, foul spirit of infirmity, out in the name of Jesus. Out right now. There we go. Shit up across Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Lord. Strength is coming back to these bodies. Movement is coming back to these joints. There's, there's organ functionality being returned to you. There's nerves coming back to life. There's paralysis leaving. Thank you, Lord, for clarity in the vision for float is disappearing, for eyesight becoming clear. Thank you, Lord. For, there's, hole, there's a hole in somebody's iris in a part that there shouldn't be a hole. Right now, the Lord is healing it right through to the optic nerve. Life coming back into the dead places in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There's polyps and fibroids that are shriveling up, cysts and tumors. Right now, we curse them at their root. We command them to shrivel up to nothing. Be cut off in Jesus' name. Thank you. Somebody has a, a lot of skin tags and moles. The Lord's healing you of those things right now. You can brush them right off. Even scarring. There's somebody that's had scarring. I'm reading now somebody's, uh, somebody's report for an endoscopy. I see your medical charts right now. Lord, I thank you that you're healing every single point on there. There's, I see the lines, the description of the disease that they found. Right now, there's somebody, you have strictures on your medical report from your endoscopy. You have furrows. You have second degree scarring. Inflammation right down here. That's you. That's over here. Thank you. Right now we command that inflammation, that scarring to leave your esophagus in Jesus name. That Barrett's esophagus be gone. Be out of there in the name of Jesus. Be out of there right now. Right now we command that those, those uh, uh, tubes to open up to open up, there's strictures, there's, there's a constriction, no more food impactions. We command those intestines to open back up. No more blockages, no more Crohn's disease, no more I, um, IBS, no more diverticulitis. Right now we command those things to leave your intestines. We speak life back into the dead places, come back to life cells, come back to life cells. There's, a, there's, a, there's a something wrong with the membranes in somebody's body. Connective tissue disorders, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, be gone right now. Stephen Johnson Syndrome, be gone right now in Jesus' name. Get out of there. 
Get out of there, fibromyalgia. Get out of there. Go, right now. Scoliosis, leave. Leave. Somebody has a crushed tailbone. There's, a, there's a, been a spinal fusion. Somebody's had operations to fuse different parts of their vertebrae together to bring stability, fusion in different joints. But right now the Lord is loosening those joints. Thank you, Lord, that there's metal turning back into bone, into vertebrae, movement coming back into them in Jesus' name. Somebody had a baseball injury to their elbow and their shoulder, baseball related injury, long time ago. Right now the Lord's healing you. He's restoring that motion in your arm right now. We have that right, full range of motion, rotator cuff coming back into alignment, hip that keeps falling out of the socket. So this is, someone's had a dislocation in their shoulder and that keeps happening. If these are you, just wave at me so I know where you are. Right now, shoulder joints coming back into sockets in Jesus' name, hip sockets back into place. Planar fasciitis, get out of those, get out of those feet. Get out of those feet. Someone's getting some new arches in their feet. Bunions are leaving. Toes straighten up. Straighten up. Straighten up. There's a healing. There's somebody's feet are hot. There's a heat in the feet. Feet in the heat. You know the enemy's defeated. Right now. He's defeated in your feet. Thank you, Lord. Right now, I speak strength. We command strength in both sides, in both feet, in both ankles. Thank you, Lord. Coming back into alignment, every single bone, as it was created to be, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Kishina Basurian. There's the power of God flowing down somebody's, down the back of their head. I see somebody, you've had a shunt put in the back of your head somewhere to drain some sort of fluid. It's causes problems from now and drainage. And there's also an issue with your lymphatic system draining properly. You get a lot of water fluid retention that causes problems and, and fluid not draining from your, a lot of oedema, swelling in the ankles, different things. Issues with the kidneys, not, not uh, clean, cleansing your, your, over here, over here. Right now we command that, that drainage in the body, that filtration to happen normally as it should. In Jesus' name, kidney disease, be gone right now. Be gone right now. Pancreas, come back to life. Thank you. There is an issue with stones forming in the bile duct. Right now, we command those stones to be obliterated, moved out of the way, moved, smashed to pieces. Thank you, Lord. Kishina basuri anamienta. Somebody's had a chromosomal deletion and a cross eyes. I see cross double vision, your eyes cross, you've got an astigmatism, you've got a problem with your eyes, uh, the way that the muscles and the eyes and the, the vision. Right now we command those muscles to come into alignment, we command those eyes to see straight, we command that whatever has been deleted to be returned to you. To be returned to you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you Lord. Nothing missing, nothing broken, completeness over you. Thank you. Somebody's had a spinal fluid leak and I see lesions in different parts of your body. The Lord's healing you right now from that spinal fluid leak. There's chronic headaches. Somebody, when you bend down, you get like everything in the room spins around. You get that pain in your head when you bend down particularly. Over here, right now the Lord is healing you. He's healing you of that right now. Cancelling that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, vertigo, leave right now. Dizzy spells, leave right now. Strength, come back to you in Jesus' name. No more chronic fatigue. There's autoimmune disease. The Lord is resetting you. There's a resetting. I hear this word, resetting. Thank you, resetting of, the, of those uh, diseases in Jesus' name. Somebody has misshaped organs. Um, I think they might be backwards or uh, different, uh, smaller, smaller or bigger than they should be. They're not, they're not equal. Right now we command those organs to be of normal size, of normal shape, of normal formation, of normal strength, of normal placement, and to function as they were created to be. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Hearts beat as they should. Somebody has myasthenia gravis. You have a problem with your diaphragm. Right now, the diaphragm, there's an issue with the, this is over here, right now there's an issue with the uh, hernia, 
uh, you have a, a hernia in, in your midsection, right there, a, a weakness in the muscle, you've had a herniation. Some, somebody had a hernia when they were born. You were, you, you were born with a hernia. And, and then they say, also do a diaphragmatic hernia, right now, full or partial. Right now, we command that to come back into alignment. We command those muscles to be strong, to be healthy, to be sealed, to be back into place. No weakness. No weakness. Everything that is broken through, retreat and go back into place in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Somebody's getting healed in their finger joints right now. In your hands, you're getting movement. You're feeling heat in your finger joints. You need to do something you couldn't do. Arthritis is leaving you. It is leaving you. Arthritis, get out of here. Get out of here. Go right now. Ganglion cysts, go right now. Go. Ovarian cysts, leave right now in Jesus' name. Testicular cancer, leave. Right now, Kishina Basuri Anamyanta. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, he's doing it. Thank you, Lord. He's doing it. There's a, there's a, a Holy Spirit has a hold of somebody's head. You might be able to feel it, actually, hands on your head right now, and not from the people praying. But this is something that the Lord is doing. He is holding your head in His hands. Thank you, Lord. Kishina Basuri. There is a, there is a, there is a resetting of the brain electricity. Right now, I cancel every lying seizure disorder in Jesus' name. Epilepsy. I hate epilepsy with a passion. I was healed of it. I had it for, for a long time. Jesus healed me 20 years ago. I've never had another seizure since. And I believe it's the same for you. Right now, in Jesus' name, epilepsy. Leave. Leave. Get out of there. Get out of there. We rebuke you. We remove you. Out of this brain in Jesus' name. Shina Bokasur. There is somebody you've had a stroke. You had a stroke. Where's my people? You had a stroke. You've got a weakness on one side of the body. Over here, over here. Anyone else? I don't want to miss where you are. Over here in the balcony up here. I see their hands. Right now, put you, somebody lay hands on the other side of your body that's weak. Right now, we command strength back into that side. Strength back into your body. Coordination back into your body. Movement back into your body. Nerves come back to life. You are dead, but come back to life in Jesus' name. Thank you. There is nerve systems coming back online. Coming back online. Feeling coming back. Feeling coming back. Movement coming back. Speech coming back. Memory being restored. Processing of speech and auditory inputs coming back online right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Neurological deficits being restored, being healed. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody has um, an, had an atrial ablation. Some of these things are hard to say. An atrial, atrial ablation. Right now, the Lord is healing your heart. He's correcting that rhythm. He's correcting the valves, the electricity, the ventricles. Right now, come, they're coming back, there's a bicuspid and a tricuspid valve that's just being recreated. I don't even know how the Lord does this, but He's doing it. Right now, there's a hole in the heart that is being sealed in. Thank you. Somebody has had a previous heart attack and part of your heart muscle, they say, is dead. It's not, it's not functioning. It got starved of oxygen. Right now, there's blood flow returning to that part of your heart muscle. It's returning. There's new pathways being created. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We believe and we receive new pathways in the heart being created on the inside of us. Thank you, Lord, for blood flowing and going. Where there's a real issue with somebody's circulation. Varicose veins and blood flowing um, not returning properly. Raynaud syndrome over here, right over here. Anyone else? Over here. Right now, I command that flow to go where it's supposed to go in Jesus' name. Blood flow where you need to get. Get no obstruction, no more clotting, no more narrowing of the arteries. Open up. Every cell in your body nourished with oxygen, with blood flow in Jesus' name. 
get it. There's a real issue with the shape of somebody's cells in their blood. You have a, a they, they, I don't know, they, they're the wrong shape and they get caught up in places. Right now, this is um, sickle cell anemia. Thank you. Right now, we command that sickle cell anemia to leave. We command the blood cells in your body to be reformed. Be reformed. Be reshapen in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. HIV, get out of here. Get out of here in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There's some serious bacterial, different weird infections that you picked up in a hospital setting. MRSA, C. diff, different things that you picked up from a hospital stay. Somebody's actually had problems because there was an instrument or some metal left behind in their body. Right now, the Lord is, is, is flushing that out. I'm telling you, you this is a good, oh, thank you. You need to say this, I am a germ graveyard. This body is where germs come to die. There's no virus that can enter my airspace and live. It dies on contact. I have an immune system. It's come back to life. It's 100%. It's a protection from God. test it out. So you might need to take off your glasses. You might need to take out some hearing aids or something. I know the power of God's flowing through you. You need to, you might need to take off some oxygen tubes. You might need to do a, a cartwheel or take a stroll or a run or touch your toes or squat down or do something that you couldn't do before. Go on, try it out. You know, the lepers, as they went, they were healed. And you might be thinking, well, Carly didn't call out my problem. Well, who cares? There was the power of God working in you. Yeah, it was, right? Yeah, it was. Test it. We're not looking for symptoms. We're looking for signs of life. We're looking for signs of life. Amen? So check it out. So here's what I want you to do now. Pay attention. Here we are. I want to put your hand up if you've discovered something has changed in your body. Show me something. You check yourself. Put your hand up. You've got hands up here. Check yourself. Put your hand up. You see something has changed in my body. Put it up really high so I can see. Hold it up so I can see. Hold it up so I can see. I see hands up there. I see hands in the middle here. I see. Keep them up. Keep them up. All right. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to come down the front really quickly. Only, it, don't come down here for prayer. Come down here if you've checked your body and you know that there's something that has changed in your body. You have tested it. You have checked it. You can feel it. Give them time. You, you can come all the way down and along these steps. All the way down along these steps. Come on down and I want you to make a line from this corner that way and a line from this corner that way. Can we give them a round of applause? This is awesome. Check yourself. Check yourself. This is awesome. All of these people are here because they're healed. Look at what, listen, this is so much fun, right? Come on down here, keep coming down here. You should be down here if you have checked your body for signs of life and you have discovered something's changed. Something's different from before we prayed to after we prayed. Is that why you're here? Is that why you're here? Do we have any microphones? Ashley, can you, can you help? Okay, That'd be great. Okay, be really, really quick. There's yeah. lots of people. So real quick, you tell what happened before and after. Uh, gallstones gone. Uh, you feel it? Yes. You're healed. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. What happened? Are you with her? Are you with her? <laughs> what happened? My skin is gone and my eye is gone. It's better. So what happened before? What was it like before? I couldn't see out of this eye. You couldn't see out of that eye. You couldn't see out of your right eye. And now try it. <laughs> Cover your left eye. Cover your good eye. Can you see? Read something for me. What does that say at the back there? 922, could you read that before? Probably not. Because you're healed, praise the Lord, she's healed. Thank you, Jesus, what happened? Stabbing back pain gone. 
Stabbing back pain gone. How long did you have that for? It, well, it's, it's only been a couple days. I've been healed previously, but it came back. Bend over, do something. How does it feel? Any pain? No. Any pain? No. That's because you're healed. Praise the Lord. What happened? Uh, back pain's gone. Stomach pain's gone. Knee pain's gone. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. What happened? I had an ovarian cyst, and I was very fullness in the middle, and I couldn't, like, bend over, and it was twinging, and now it stopped doing. Bend over, show us. Praise the Lord. She's healed. That's awesome. What happened? My heart's re-healed. My, part of my heart wasn't working. And I believe it's working now. Praise the Lord. That's you healed. How did it happen? The pain left my body from a previous car wreck. And my heart was racing. And now it's just normal. It's normal. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. You guys, you just sit down and then you guys move up. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i be right back. Come, we can do this like in two minutes. Here we go. Woo, woo, woo. What happened? It started last night. I had had some major things going on in both my eyes. Primarily my right one. I had pretty significant blindness going on. And I took my glasses off yesterday, haven't put them on since, but I still had pain in my right eye and now the pain is gone. The pain's gone, you can see clearly, can you read for me? Oh yeah, 9.24 p.m., everything's clear. Everything's clear, praise the Lord, you're healed, what happened? Yeah, I've, I've had neuropathy, uh, numbness and tingling in my feet and my toes for like over a year. And I've been going to the doctor, I had, um, several doctor appointments last week and they wanted to do um, like an ultrasound and um, uh, uh, what else, something else. How are they now? It's gone. The pain's gone? You know why? Because you're healed. The pain is gone. The pain's gone, the numbing, yeah. numbness is gone. Praise Lord, you're healed. Thank you, Jesus, what happened? Um, well, I've been dealing with epigastric issues and throat issues for a year and a half and being in pain and discomfort on my chest every day. A year and a half. A year and a half. And I saw nine times what different, seeing different doctors and nothing seemed to be, nobody can figure out what was going on. And I started praying and I just came across, um, Andrews, you are already healed. And I came here, this is my first time, and learning everything and absorbing everything. And then I felt like the chill and the cold all over my body, and I felt something left on my chest. And I am in the medical field myself, and this is true. And I just want to testify this is You're healed. Praise the Lord, she's healed. Thank you, Jesus. That's also what happened. Similar story. I can't sit without having nerve pain in my legs, back of my hamstrings, lower glutes, as well as weakness. And same kind of thing, multiple MRIs, CTs, those kinds of things, and the doctors can't find and understand it, but I felt the weakness go away, sat down, and didn't squirm in my chair. Any pain? No. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, what happened? I've been fighting my body for the last 14 years. And if you saw me about 20 minutes ago, I couldn't even stand up. I, I, 14 years? Yeah, I could hardly get to the bathroom, and here I am. And the devil tried to kill my friend and me and since we arrived in Denver, like four times he tried to kill us. Broke her leg, she's in a wheelchair over there. And, and he missed hitting, I, instead of hitting a concrete wall with my head, I hit my shoulder, missed it. How are you now? I'm better. I you couldn't stand up like this. I couldn't even, if you saw me 20 minutes ago, I couldn't even walk up the steps with holding on with a cane. Show us what a healed woman looks like right now, look at this. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 14 years. What happened? I threw my right arm out, and it was really painful, and the pain is completely gone. Give us a windmill. Any pain? No. Oh. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Hi. I've had foot pain for years, and it's completely gone right now. Foot pain completely gone. It's How does it feel? stay gone. It's Come on. Give it a, how does it feel? Any pain? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Give me a tennis racket. Come on. <laughs> He's healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Yeah, I, I was uh, actually praying for my niece, and then I, I and then she was saying something about the uh, every diseases, and then I say, Lord, tell tell her to say varicose veins, and then it's gone. Your varicose yeah. veins are gone. Yeah. Varicose veins are gone. Praise the Lord. Can, and then I can bend my knee. Could you bend your knee like that before? No. You couldn't do that before. I can do that before. But now, no, now you can. Do you know why? Because you're healed. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What happened? Oh, what Chinese? Chinese? You have an interpreter? Interpreter. Because of cancer, I feel a lot of pressure around my body. 
And today I feel very relieved and all the stress and pressure are gone. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. You're healed. Thank you, Lord. You're healed. Amen. Uh, I believe God already healed me. Amen. You're healed. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be right back. You too. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Sure I got the miracles they got. But I mean, I've got this illness and that else. I've already prayed for the Lord to fix it from the stripes. But I've got this heart condition. And the Lord pretty much told me if I give him my whole heart, he'll fix my heart. And I feel like I'm here and he's giving it to me. And I'm going to get to go to college and everything. And Amen. It's working out good. You're healed, brother. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? I had... Uh, popping in my wrist and now it's gone. Popping in your wrist? Yeah, I broke my wrist a month ago. Try it out. How's it feel? Any popping or pain? No. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Um, I couldn't see straight. You couldn't see straight. But now I can. So before this meeting, wait, wait. Okay. just in case people missed it, Let me see. you could tell us again. Let me see. Let me there you go. What's your name? Olivia. And how old are you? Six. Six? You're nearly as tall as me. <laughs> what? So before this meeting, you wasn't able to see straight? Yeah. And now how can you see? Straight. Praise yeah. the Lord, she's healed. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You. What happened? Yeah. Um, my knees were healed once, but then it went back. And then today is all healed. Try them out. How'd they feel? Any pain? No, no. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Uh, I have this growth on my thumb. The doctor said I have to go for surgery, and even if I go for operation, it might come back. So while Kali was praying for fingers, I put my hand on my thumb, and the thing just disappeared. I have a photo. She has a photo. Growth oh, wow, growth. yeah, she has a photo of a growth on her thumb, and it's completely gone. You can see it's completely gone. Look at that. Hold it up for everyone and see. Praise the Lord. The growth is gone on your thumb. You're healed. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. What happened? I have a torn tendon. A torn tendon? Yes. And I was healed. I Try it out. Could you do that before? I had a lot of pain. Any pain? No pain now. You know why? Because you're healed. Thank you. All. Torn tendon healed. What happened? Praise God. I came with my, better, my, with my wife here to support her. That Jesus has touched us and he loves us. Amen. He's a, he talked to me and gave me more strength than I've always had. Praise the Lord. And it's come out now. Come on, praise the Lord. That's Thank awesome. You, Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. What happened? Let's move over here so people can see you. What happened? Um, I had a bad cough, um, and I needed to take cough drops, and um, we prayed for um, my cough, and now um, it's gone. No coughing Yay. now. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? My shoulder was very sore. and Your shoulder was sore? Shoulder was very sore. and it's Try it out. How does it feel? Any pain? No. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Yeah, I was having a problem with some inside issues, and as they were praying for me, I felt them lift up and go back to where they belong. Some of the organs inside? Yes. Carly called that out. Organs going back to the right place. Yes. Praise the Lord. You're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Uh, the clarity in my vision has improved quite a bit. My right eye, especially, it was very blurry, and that now I can see somewhat clear out of it now. Your vision's coming back. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Um, arthritis for over 10 years in my hand, and I can move well. 10 years. 10 years no of arthritis. Pain. No pain. Show us. Hold your hand up. Show us. Could you do that before? Pain. Not with that. I could move it, but it was painful. Any pain now? No. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. Your arthritis healed. What happened, sir? Um, I, had, I had a stroke uh, two years ago, and uh, it was caused by AFib, and uh, I, I don't have any more AFib, and my, my, I can feel the healing surging in my right side. Praise the Lord. You've been healed. And one, one other thing. It was prophesied to me uh, in the early 90s that I would outrun teenagers when I'm 80 years old. So I'm standing on that. Praise it's the Lord. Coming. Come on, he's coming. Amen. You guys move up. Be right back. Woo! You right for a few more minutes, people? This is yeah. too much fun. I'll be quick. That's you can quick. go if you have to, but I'm going to uh, So I have degenerative <laughs> arthritis, um, um, scoliosis. Uh, that's arthritic, arthritic. And I've had, I have a lot of pain in my lower back, but it's... It's feeling really good. Pain's gone. You're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? 
Um, I've been walking out my healing with the Lord for two years, but something that was hanging on was like very sound sensitivity. I've been wearing these earplugs and kind of skipping out on praise and worship because it was too much. And then Carly said something about the brain. I put my head, my hand like that, and it's all gone. It's gone. You're healed. Praise the Lord. Sound sensitivity. Gone. What happened? It's my bones. I've been in severe pain for many years, diagnosed with severe osteoporosis. And since I've come into Karis Bible College, the love of God, oh, I usually live by a heating pad and ice. I alternate them all the time. I can't walk very far, not even a half of a block. Since I've been here, no ice, no heat. Any pain? No pain. She healed. Look at this. She healed. Thank you, Jesus. And she That's awesome. In the line for quite a while. Uh, pain from violence, and um, my heart was broken from all that. And so I'm, I'm much lighter. I feel like 10 pounds lighter. That's because you're healed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Emotional healing. Heart healing. What happened? Uh, the doctor said I was anemic. Um, every time I would stand up, I would get lightheaded and dizzy. Um, and then she said to test it out. So uh, I sat down and I got back up and no, no dizziness. No dizziness. Yeah, healed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Well, I'm getting my breath support back. I've been a trumpet player, hadn't been able to play for years. My lungs felt really constricted when I was prayed for. They opened up and I feel my diaphragm's getting strong. Wow. Take a big breath. <laughs> diaphragm healed, he's healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Um, I came here for the healing of my eyes. I have astigmatism. I've had astigmatism in my right, in my left eye and just general very nearsightedness. Um, and then um, I was really struggling with frustration and everything. And then I got a fever today and was struggling with that fever all day long. And so I went up and um, while everyone was praying, we all laid hands on each other. And I, the, I was getting those chills, those shakes, your body's hot and everything, you know what a fever does. And the sensitivity of that fever struggled throughout that entire prayer, but it's gone now. And I can still feel it struggling and my eyes are still not where they will be, but I know that I'm healed and that they will be. Amen, 100% healing in Jesus' That's name. Confession Amen. something. Several weeks ago, I was on a mountain bike ride and acting like I was 15 years old and hurt my back. Um, by the time I got home, which is in Hayes, Kansas, the L2 was a bulgy disc. And between L1 and L2, I had a compression of the nerve. Uh, the surgeon told me last Thursday that it would take, if I didn't have surgery, it would take at least a year for me to heal. Uh, I have been able to stand for more than a few minutes at a, uh, at a time. For You've been standing a long time now. I've been standing for 10 minutes. How's it feel? I have no pain. No pain? Oh, you're healed. You're healed. Your back's healed. Thank you, Jesus. Back's healed. What happened? Um, Saturday, I had um, back pain, and it's just been here ever since. And um, this is the first time I've been able to stand or sit without a lot of, without pain. Um, and I can touch my toes. <laughs> show, show, show us what you can do. Check it out. Any pain? <laughs> no! Could you do that before? No! Hallelujah! She's healed! Thank you, Jesus! What happened? Um, I was, one of the prayers I had was that I felt a lot of spiritual darkness around me, and all of a sudden a bright, bright, beautiful light flashed over here, and that yeah. darkness feels like it's gone. It was Amen. a great blessing. You've been healed. You've been delivered, brother. That's awesome. Yeah. What happened? Hi. Uh, three years ago, I slipped and fell going down our steps outside, and since then, I've had like a searing pain in my tailbone whenever I sit and stand up, and it's gone. Any pain? Yeah. No pain. You're healed. Yeah. Tailbone healed in yeah. Jesus' name. What happened? I've had severe chronic back pain for as long as I can remember, and I just I can't feel a thing anymore now. You try it out. Touch your toes. Was... Any pain? <laughs> Nothing. No Nothing. pain. He's healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Well, the very first night, I've, um, someone prayed for me, and I had, I've always had, for a long time, stomach issues, um, and God healed that on the first morning, um, and I was believing for a rash that's been growing on my back leg, and just, it's just so bad, and, but I've also got some female precancerous inside of me, and um, I heard the Holy Spirit said, that's healed, and this is healed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good double whammy. What happened? I, uh, I sprained my ankle in softball over a year ago. I've had not fun pain ever since. And uh, I can actually move my ankle again. And it feels great. Any pain? No pain. Did you do that before? No, not like that. Show us again. Show us how, how does it feel. Well, I can move it. I can bend it now. Praise the Lord. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Uh, so I probably called out. I floaters, floaters in the eye, and so I'm not seeing it anymore. It was, you know, it was all over the place. So I'm not, I don't see it. Floaters are gone. Healed. Thank you, Jesus. 
pretty blurry. Like I couldn't look across the room and see anything clearly, and it's it's definitely clear. So can you read the clock? Yeah, 9:37. Praise the Lord! You're healed. Thank you, Lord. Blurry eyesight gone. What happened? For over two years, I've heard a double tone in my ear, and as a singer and worship leader and musician and instructor, it's been an absolute torment. And so they said, do something you couldn't do before. So I held my ear, and I only heard the voice God gave me. Come on. Awesome. Praise the Lord. That's, that's powerful. Thank you, Lord. Healed in Jesus' name. What happened? I suffered a brain injury to my central nervous system from a pharmaceutical medication the doctor gave me. And uh, anyways, I've been in extreme discomfort and pain. Uh, for a long time, mm. but right now I feel great. Man, you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. He's healed. Amen. What happened? Okay, I've had a lot of car accidents. Donna, wherever. She a lot of cars. I'm not going home with you. <laughs> yeah, no. it was never my fault. I don't even want. Just like Donna, my husband keeps buying me cars, and I keep wrecking them. Anyways, it hurt my brain really badly. And uh, I haven't seen colors in my head for a while. And I saw colors. My eye was clear because it was cloudy. And my ear is not ringing. Praise the Lord. Ringing the ear healed. Eye healed. Colors healed. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. awesome. What happened? Carly called out a dead heart. I had a widow make her heart attack five and a half years ago. So my ejection fraction was 30 at 35%. And my cardiologist wanted me to go back in three years ago to see if they could put in a defibrillator. And I said, no. Nope. So I've been standing on my healing. And when she called that out, I just felt the power of God. Amen. It hit you. That's because you're healed. Praise the Lord. Healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? I had a failed cardiac surgery in my left eye. And when I would turn to look at the right, then I would see a black spot. And that's gone. The black spot's gone. So look to your right now. Any spots? No. Hallelujah. You're healed. Also, I had a severe painful um, injury in my tailbone and it was hard to sit, very hard to sit and that's all gone. The pain's gone in your back, hallelujah, tailbone and healed. Thank you Jesus, what happened? I uh, was determined I was gonna get my back healed when he came here and it's healed. It's healed, you feel any pain? Yeah. Pain's gone, you're healed, back healed in Jesus' name. Thank you Lord. What happened? That's awesome. Uh, a vertigo. Vertigo, okay. Positional vertigo. Mm. And it's all better now. It's all gone. Any dizziness or anything? Nope. Hallelujah. Healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Well, I came to the conference to uh, get my legs healed so I could walk again. But yesterday morning, I forgot that every six months I get a cortisone shot on my left shoulder. And during worship, I, I don't need the shot anymore. It's, Did it's, you do that before? Oh, no. no, no. You couldn't do that before? In fact, while I was worshiping, this is as far as my hand would go. And then slowly it's just, whoa, wow. Praise the Lord. That's a start. That's a start. I believe you're going to get full healing in Jesus' name. Come here, hand. Come here, hand. Right now, we just speak strength yeah, into those legs. We command full range of motion. We command full strength, every muscle, every nerve, every bone functioning as it was created to be in Jesus' name. This power that's already healed your shoulder is working on the inside of you, brother. It's working. It's bringing Jesus life back name. to the Kisha dead places. It's bringing yes. a bit mobility back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. That's the power of God. Now, power of God's all over you, brother. That's awesome. Need, Praise the Lord. Minute, sir. Here. <laughs> you need to show you. I was in a wheelchair when I was 18 years old. I was told I was never going to walk again. Right? Yeah, just, I'm just saying. Yeah. Thank you, there Lord. You go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We call it working of miracles, a working of miracles, you know? This is a working of miracles. Thank you, Jesus. Like this in a year and a half. A year and a half since you've walked like this. Thank you, Jesus. This is a working of miracles right now. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's a working of miracles right there, brother. Praise the Lord. That's you better, awesome. You better go this brother right here. with him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What happened? Uh, the, my wife prayed over me and a gentleman behind me. I don't even know his name. And he laid hands on me. I felt this warmness throughout my body. And my Achilles is torn. My meniscus is torn. And my back is jacked up. And I feel great. Have you tried it out? Touch your toes. How does it feel? Any pain? No pain. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. What happened? 
Jesus just did a double whammy healing on both of us. You explained it. At darling. the same time, when Carly said, get your hands warmed up like this, we both turned to each other and put our hands on our ears. And I said I had about 70 to 80 percent diminished hearing in my right ear. It was next to profound. And I just asked her to pray for me, and she said, really, me too, so pray for my ear too. So we both did this and covered each other's ears and prayed and commanded the ears to be open. And then at that very moment, Carly called out, a, a scar tissue on the esophagus was being dissolved. And it was something that I've had for the last 10 years that had, I had struggled with. And I felt that, but I heard that with her hands on my ears, <laughs> on both ears. You and your ears. Too. And we tested it. We put an ear in, a finger in this ear, a finger in this ear. And we, so all four of your ears are healed. All, all, your heels, all your ears are healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You. Well, the main reason I came was for my back. It had a whirlpool accident and it had five compression breaks in my back. All, a lot of nerve damage and uh, no power, no strength in my legs. And when we were praying, I felt the strength come back in my legs. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Any pain? No. That's because you're healed. No pain. Yeah. Strength back in your legs. That's awesome. What happened? Um, shoulder pain healed. And as I was waiting to give testimony, the floaters in my eyes were all gone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. That's what happened? That's worth the wait in line, see? I, um, I had joint pains and muscle pain in my whole body and chest pain, and now I can feel like it's loosened up. So, How's the pain? It definitely went down. Pain going in Jesus' name, 100%. No more pain in Jesus' name right now. I still have the noise in my right ear that no one touched me. In Jesus' name, be gone right now. He is open, 100% in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. What happened? So, uh, sometimes when I'd stand up, like if I was looking at something for a long time, I'd get like weird twisting in my head and like kind of dizzy and I just knew it was gone and yeah it's all gone now so, so you're not dizzy anymore yeah. well it was just when I'd like stand up for like a couple seconds but no it's gone that's because you're healed praise yeah. the Lord that's awesome what happened so I saw Jesus on the throne just kept saying I'm ready I'm ready and I was like okay I receive your healing and um, multiple lumps are gone out of my right breast praise the Lord lumps gone in the breast lumps. thank you Jesus what happened well, I was believing for some big things that didn't manifest at that time. And I was walking around enjoying other people's testimonies. And I thought, oh my gosh, my knee. I don't feel my knee. I had an accident 10 weeks ago. And so that's been healed. And Andrew, thank you. He had a vision of people coming forth at the beginning of the conference yeah. and getting healed. Uh, Jacqueline prayed for me and my hand tremors are healed. I'm an artist. That's important to me to yeah. get makeup on, mm -hmm. eat cereal, and yeah. all the rest. That's a big deal. And the best book I ever read was The Power of the Imagination. Yeah. I'm going to use my imagination to have the, everything else manifest. So thank Amen. You. That's awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Last couple. Got a few more over Last here. couple right here. They're too good. We don't want this to. This is fine. Them. What happened? I felt uh, the fire of God in my, my whole body, just extreme heat. And I know the release of the healing power of God touched my body tonight. Amen. The power goes all over you, brother. Come on. Yeah. What happened? Um, well, while Carly was, was teaching, um, I received a revelation that I'm completely healed. I've been coughing for two years. Now it's gone. Coughing for two years? Yeah. You haven't coughed for a while now? Yeah. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? My thumbs have been... I, uh, I shouldn't have been doing this, but I was roller skating. And, and, and I don't want to say I'm too old to roller skate, but I probably shouldn't have been. But I felt at different times, and I've had, my thumbs have been, and I, I couldn't do this without any pain, and there's no pain. Any pain now? Hold them up. Show everyone. Show everyone. You couldn't do that before. Come on. I, I couldn't do it without any pain. Awesome. And I, my, my one, two, three, fourth little toe on this side it hurts all the time. I have to take my shoes off. I think there's some circulation, some things about it. And, and um, it is, I can't make it hurt because it would always hurt in my... <laughs> That's because you're healed. That's because you're healed. <laughs> Hallelujah, jump on it, come on. Any pain? No pain. That's because you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? Well, I was standing up and she was calling out people who are dizziness. And I've had like dizziness for two weeks and... Uh, after she said dizziness, I didn't feel the dizziness anymore. But also, you called out uh, circulation, and I've been praying for my blood pressure to be normal. 
I haven't tested it, but when I got out of the car and saw the sign that says, God wants you to be healed today, I believed it. Amen. I believe you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What happened? I had a really bad floaters in my left eye, and I couldn't even read with my left eye the time, and now I can see it with my left eye, 948. Any floaters? Any what? Any floaters in your eyes? Uh, yeah, but really bad floaters in my left eye, legally blind in my left eye. How are they now? Oh, they're fine. I couldn't, I couldn't have read that time up there, 948. Praise the Lord, you're healed. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. He Thank you, Lord. He's legally blind. Couple he's more left here. eye, and now he can see. That's kind of a What deal. happened? Um, I came here with a death sentence of the doctor proclaiming that cancer spread more through my spine, through my pelvis, and I was suffering a lot of really severe pain this last few weeks. And I think that this, the thing that's really I've gotten is that I've gotten my belief back, and I had a vision of God just saying, why don't you trust me? Mm. And I think that's what I've been missing because the reports just keep getting worse and they keep having... You know, people contacted me saying, you have to plan the end of your life, and I'm not doing that. You've had a revelation. You're healed in Jesus' name right now. The power of God's entering your body. You're healed right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. What happened? So I was praying for somebody while we were, um, while you were calling things out, and so I didn't hear anything. But as you, people were coming up here, they were talking about the floaters, and I had those, and I don't have those anymore. And I went to Julianne and Butch's class, and they were talking about hardened hearts. And since I went to that class and went forward, it's like I'm just feeling changes in my body and my heart. I'm just Come feeling on. You're healed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, let's give Jesus some praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So good. Thank you, Lord. So good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let me just say one thing real quickly. Just because you didn't feel anything in your body doesn't mean you wasn't healed. Believers lay hands on the sick and they recover. We do meetings like this and we often hear about people getting healed on the way to the car the next day, the next morning, the next week. So don't dig up the seed and say, I wasn't healed. And if you feel symptoms come back on you, just rebuke those symptoms. You don't need me and Carly. You prayed for each other. Rebuke those symptoms and stand on your healing, praise God. Wasn't it fun to hear all those testimonies of people being healed? Thank you, Jesus. Let's give Jesus some praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Praise the Lord. What an awesome night, huh? Real quick. Isn't that incredible? Wonderful. Wonderful. 